Welcome back to Urban Traditionalists. Today we are going to pressure can 28 quarts of potatoes. I bought a 50 pound box of potatoes from my local farmer uh, last week. Yesterday I spent about an hour and a half to two hours peeling, chopping, and prepping them. I stored them all in my sacred like ice cream buckets that I've been using all harvest season and filled them with water and then just left them on my kitchen floor overnight. This morning I opened them up and got cracking. So I'm gonna run you through what it takes to pressure can potatoes and uh, just a simple process of that. But first you might be wondering, how do you eat pressure canned potatoes? We always get asked this question, which is funny to me because you eat them the same as any other potato. This is a jar from last year. It is our last jar, which is super funny that we only have one jar left and I'm literally doing our next batch today. Um, this is what they look like after they've been sitting for a while. The water line does decrease, but you don't have to worry too much about that. Your biggest thing is your seal. People always ask me why I keep the rings on my jar. I don't keep them on there tight enough to actually distort the seal. They're more just on there loosely so that we have a way to seal it if we only use half. Our favorite way to have these is hash. Rhett and I are big breakfast people and we love a good hash with bacon and eggs. So that is our favorite way to use these. These are fully cooked and ready to go. I do have a video of me making hash with these in our trailer. That is actually our number one place to make hash because camping, we love breakfast. We don't really eat breakfast day to day, but camping, we do. So I have a video which I will link below if you wanna watch that. Hash is number one. Number two is mashed potatoes. You just, in any case, you always wanna empty your jar and rinse them. So you rinse them and then put them in fresh water and bring them to a boil for about 10 minutes. And then that's it, they're done and ready to go. You just mash them with whatever you like to mash them with, butter, milk, whatever. Um, another way we've done them is bacon potato soup or whatever potato soup you like. Again, same process, rinse them off, throw them in your pan, get going. The fourth way we've done it is potato salad. And that's probably my second favorite way of doing it, uh, but I've only done it like once, where you just, again, rinse them off really, really good, get all that starch off of there. And then because they are literally completely ready to go like this, morning chickens, uh, you can just dump them into a bowl cold and then mix everything up and you literally have a delicious potato salad in like 10 minutes. So. This is probably our number one favorite preserve and uh, this year I'm doing a lot. Every year I order a 50 pound box but last year I only did like 30 pounds and I did I think it was 21 quarts where today I literally just finished. I woke up at 5 a.m. got the coffee going because you need the coffee and thankfully I had you know like I said prepped everything yesterday, peeled, chopped, washed, got them all in water yesterday. That was a huge undertaking and I was happy to have that done so that this morning I could just get into canning. If you've never pressure canned, this is gonna be a really great video for you and I'm gonna keep it short so that we just run over the basics. When you pressure can, you do not need to sterilize your jars. However, they should be washed and they should be hot in this case. Not all pressure canning methods start as a hot pack, but potatoes are a hot pack, so you want them hot. So my favorite way to keep my jars ready to go is in the oven. I set my oven to 220 degrees and all my washed jars go in the oven. I then put all my lids and my bands in a container and I fill that with boiling water and that goes in the oven. So everything just sits in the oven hot and ready to go. That will also sterilize your jars if you wanna use that method for water bath canning or what have you, but they don't need to be sterile for pressure canning because your, your pressure canner gets hot enough to sterilize in the process, so you don't have to worry about it. Next, you want to parboil your potatoes. So you wanna get a pot on the stove and get that going with some boiling water. Alongside that, you can get your canner on the stove and put two inches of water in the bottom of your canner along with a splash of vinegar. I've been canning long enough that I kind of already know what two inches looks like, so you can measure it if you want. Once you get used to it, you know where that two inch mark is. 
add a splash of vinegar. That keeps your jars from getting this cloudiness on them. If you don't use vinegar, you'll pull your jars out and they'll be covered in this residue and you might panic. Vinegar just eradicates that. If you have the residue, don't worry about it. It just means you forgot the vinegar stage. The other thing you want to do before your canner gets hot is oil the rim. So you want to put a little bit of olive oil on your fingers and then just run your fingers around that rim. This keeps the lid from sticking during your cooking process and allows the lid to come off easy when you're done. So you really just want to get enough on there to lubricate the rim. We're not saturating, we're not going overboard, just a little bit. You also want to make sure that the hole, the vent hole on your canner lid is clear. This vent hole can get obstructed with things during the canning process of previous canning methods or what have you. So you just want to make sure that's clear. You can make sure you can see through it, poke a little toothpick through there if you have to. So you want to make sure that's clear. Other than that, you're ready to go. So you want to get your camera, canner simmering <laughs> and you want to get your parboiling water boiling for your potatoes. Next, we're going to be scooping our potatoes into that boiling water and leaving them in there for just a couple minutes. When that's done, you pull out a hot jar from the oven, pop it on the counter. We're gonna add one teaspoon of salt to the bottom of the jar. You're then gonna fill it with potatoes, leaving a one inch head space. For those of you who are new to canning, that rim line there is your one inch head space. So you wanna fill your potatoes right to there. You're then going to leave a one inch to a half inch headspace with hot water. This is a hot pack. So I find the easiest way to do that, just keep your kettle going the whole time you're doing this. Boil water, boil water, boil water. When your kettle is hot and boiled, just pour that right over your potatoes in your jar. Fill it up to that one inch or half inch headspace somewhere in there. And then once that's done, you're gonna wipe your rims with a clean rag, that's a designated rag this whole time, try not to use it for other things. Just gonna wipe your rim, make sure there's nothing on there. We don't want salt on there or starch or anything. Once you've done that, pop your lid on, pop your rim on, finger tight. So as soon as your fingers reach resistance, stop, don't wrench it, just finger tight. And then this is obviously gonna be very, very hot. So grab it with your jar grabber and pop it into your canner. You're going to repeat that process seven times. Seven jars fit in a standard canner. If you have a bigger canner, I'm jealous. Fill more jars. I can only do seven at a time. Once your canner is full, you're going to put your lid on and you will lock it in place. There is a little dent on the canner and a little arrow. You want to line those up. That is for the All-American Pressure Canner, which is what I have. And you want to lock that in place. You will then make sure that lid is on there evenly. You want that gap to be even all the way along. There have been times where my lid has been tilted. You wanna try and fix that tilt and get it on there even. You will then take your toggles, one from each opposite side, bring it up and just lightly notch them down, just enough so the toggles don't fall down. And then you'll repeat that again and one more time. Once all your toggles are up and in place, you're gonna tighten them. Tighten them at opposite sides so that your lid tightens down evenly. Once that lid is nice and tight, and this is not a finger tight, this is a wrenching tight. Once your lid is nice and tight, you are ready to turn your heat all the way to high. You will now wanna bring your water to boiling. So what we're wanting to do now is create a vent out of that vent hole. So if you have a weight for your pressure canner, you are not putting it on yet. You're gonna wait for your canner to vent for 10 minutes. Now this is like a decent vent. You wanna be able to put your hand over top of that vent hole and feel a decent steam coming out. And you can hear it too. You'll be able to hear that vent. Start your timer for 10 minutes. Let it vent for a full 10 minutes. When your timer has finished, you will take your weighted gauge and place it on for your elevation. My elevation is 15 pounds of pressure, <laughs> the highest you can get. So you're gonna take your weighted gauge and pop that on. For me, it's 15 pounds. When your weight goes on, the venting will cease and your gauge will now start increasing. I leave my, my heat on high for this, but when my canner gets to around that 10 to 12 pounds of pressure, I turn my heat down to about a seven. And then I let it come to 15 a little bit slower. 
When it hits the 14 mark, my weight will start to rattle and release pressure. That's the point of the weight. It helps keep the whole pot at the correct pressure. So once that starts to rattle, you'll find it'll come up a lot slower, but when it reaches to 15, it should be rattling pretty decently. You do not want it to go past 15. If it does, just slowly notch your heat down until you maintain that 15 pounds of pressure. Once you hit 15 pounds of pressure, that's when your processing time starts. So if you have uh, a pressure counting book or following recipe, which you should be following a recipe, your processing time is once it hits pressure. Potatoes are my favorite because they're only 25 minutes of processing time. Meat products is like an hour and a half. So this is only 25 minutes. So this will process at 15 pounds of pressure for 25 minutes. If your canner <clears throat> drops below pressure, you have to bring it back up to pressure and start again. Now, if mine drops to like 14 and a half, then I don't necessarily restart it. I'm gonna stop my dog from barking. He is now inside. So if it, if it gets to like 14, I'm not super worried because the weight also is telling me that it is at high pressure. Uh, but if you're dropping to like 13 and a half, that's too much. You got to bring it back up to 15 and you have to restart your processing time. Doesn't matter if you only have five minutes left, you now got to restart it. What I find is more common that around the 15 to 20 minute mark, you actually increase pressure. So I actually sometimes find that my canner gets up to be to 16 pounds of pressure around that 20 minute mark. You gotta notch it down at that point and bring it back down to 15. That starts to get dangerous. Now, this is the really important bit. You cannot leave your canner alone for that very reason because it might be gaining pressure and then if you're not around to check that, that's when pressure canning gets dangerous. You have to be around to watch your canner and make sure that it doesn't drop below pressure. <laughs> this can get really tedious and I used to just put on Netflix, but I'm actually in school right now. So I set up a little study station, poured a coffee and I just studied on the side of the kitchen and watched that as I was reading, which actually turned out great. I got a lot of studying done and the time went by really, really fast. After your processing time, you just want to shut your oven off or your element. Just turn it off. Don't touch the weighted gauge. Don't touch your canner. Just turn the heat off. What happens now is your canner will start to decrease in pressure. Your weight will stop rattling and you have to wait for your pressure canner to get down to zero, all the way down to zero. And yes, this can take 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on your stove, but you have to wait it out because what makes a good seal is the slow increase of heat, the maintenance of that high heat, and the slow decrease of heat. If you rush that process, you not only risk not sealing your jars, you risk them breaking. So you have to wait for it to come back down to zero. This is the worst part for me, I'm very impatient. Um, but usually this is the part where I'll go do something else. Once it drops down to 13 or 12 pounds of pressure, I'll go have a shower or I'll start cleaning the kitchen or I'll go do something else because you're kind of, you're in the safety zone at that bit, it's coming down. When it reaches zero pounds of pressure, you take your weighted gauge off and you let it vent for another 10 minutes. This, you'll suddenly hear your jars rattling again and getting really hot and so you have to let them slowly go through that process of coming back down from pressure. So 10 minutes of venting at the end. Once it's done venting, you can take your lid off, finally. Again, toggles, just twist them opposite sides like you put it on and then bring them down. You want to twist the lid and lift it away from you, okay? There's going to be a lot of steam in here and steam burns are more dangerous than hot water burns. You want that steam to go in the opposite direction. Put the lid somewhere safe. Your jars are now all viewable and you can lift them out and put them wherever you're going to put them. Put a towel down. I usually put mine on a cutting board. And you usually want to let them sit for a full 24 hours before you label them and put them away just to assure that they are fully sealed. So wherever you put them, you want them to be somewhere that they can sit for a really long time. And that's about it. <laughs>
I did four rounds this morning of quart jars. So I have 28 quarts all together. And um, because this is a hot canning process, I just re-added water to my canner and then put the next set of jars in. Actually, what I did is yesterday, like I said, peeled, chopped, washed, stored. And then today I um, parboiled essentially all of them, put them in jars, and I stored them in my oven just hot and ready to go in the canner so that when one batch came out, the next, the next batch could just go straight in. Um, it was literally an eight hour process. I started at 5.15 this morning. I just finished. It was like just before one o'clock when I came out here to do the video. All my jars are now sitting, which feels amazing. Um, but this is, like I said, probably our, our favorite preserved food just because it's so versatile. Uh, we love potatoes, but you know, the process of peeling them and washing them and cooking them is so lengthy. Um, so this process just cuts all that work out of it when we're ready to eat it. And like I said, hash is our favorite way to have this. Um, so we're pretty excited to add that to our inventory. I hope you like this video. I wanted to keep it short. I wanted it to be super informative in a very short amount of time. I hope you like that. Let me know in the comments if this method of video works for you. I've experimented with a few different types of videos thus far. And let me know what method of receiving information is your favorite. Um, and I will try to accommodate. Thanks for watching. We're Urban Traditionalists. Make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us for further videos. This has been Pressure Canning Potatoes. Hope you give it a try. Hope you learn how to pressure can. It is an invaluable skill that more people need to know. So there it is. We'll catch you on the next one.